welcome to the first video of the Ganitsura channel on YouTube. So this will be a slightly longish video but uh, uh, from the next time our videos will be short and it will involve some amount of mathematics. So to start with the proceedings I would like to speak about something that is not entirely math. Uh, I would like to speak about the life and works of Richard Feynman. The Nobel laureate in physics from Caltech. So this is a very old talk that uh, one of the team members, uh, that is me Manjil, uh, gave at Tezpur University. So some of the information is not correct. For example, my email ID is no longer this, and I am no longer associated with the university. But still, so one of the very famous quotes of Feynman is the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool and that is something that I have always tried to keep in mind whenever I do something so let's begin so Richard Phillips Feynman was born on 11 May 1918 in Far Rockaway New York it's a suburb of New York and he died in on 15th of February 1988 in Los Angeles California so roughly he had uh, around 70 years he lived for 70 years so there is this um, this limerick that that uh, someone wrote for Feynman and it says like this Galileo and Newton and Einstein and Bohr are egg-headed heroes of legend and lore in the annals of science they are bona fide giants the bellies of the physicists ball but the brains notwithstanding you have got to admit that for jocular genius for wisdom with wit for sheer creativity and hyperactivity, it's Feynman who is king of them all. And this is very true. Feynman was known to be a fun-loving physicist. He was not like the general mundane physicist that you know of or the, or the absent-minded professor that you would like to think about. But uh, he was what uh, uh, one would call a very witty scientist and, and he, he joked a lot. Uh, so the poem continues. Ideas were his passion. His work was his play. He helped split the atom, explain weak decay. So we'll we'll speak about something of his work later on. His mind was so quick. He made rivals look thick, and his colleagues were often stuck dumb. His lectures were brilliant. His insights sublime. He safe cracked the secrets of matter and time. He did desktop some articles on waves and on particles, then kick back and hang on his drum. He did tell a tall tale with his. Trademark Panache, he discovered the cause of the cell challenger crash. He dreamed of a track from his home at Caltech to Tuba, a land little known, but it chanced that a cancer aborted his quest and soon Dr. Feynman was laid to his rest. So ended this says of the nuclear age who had marched to a beat of his own. So this poem uh, very clearly uh, encapsulates everything that, that Feynman's story contains, his work his adventures and, and his life, his death, everything. So this is a typical Feynman cartoon that you would find on the web. Uh, and you can see here he is playing a, a set of bongo drums. And he was a very, very good bongo drum player. In fact, he, he uh, did some stage shows too. And these are some physics equations. So uh, we give a brief academic biography. Richard Feynman was born in New York uh, on 11th of May 1918. He studied at MIT where he obtained his BSc in 1939 and Princeton University where he obtained his PhD in 1942. He was a research assistant at Princeton, then professor of theoretical physics at Cornell University, visiting professor and thereafter appointed professor of theoretical physics at Caltech. Uh, he was Richard C. S. Tolman, professor of theoretical physics at Caltech at the time of his death. So he did his uh, schooling from the Far Rockaway School and uh, there are many interesting stories about Feynman. Uh, to know more about him, one should read a very fantastic book called Surely You Are Joking, Mr. Feynman, which uh, Feynman himself co-authored with Ralph Langton, his longtime friend. And that book is full of uh, famous anecdotes of uh, Feynman, of other scientists, and it's, it's a very fun read. Anyone who is interested in science should, should definitely read th that book. So there is another biography of Feynman by James Clegg, which is called Genius, and it's it's kind of more scientifically oriented than surely we're joking, Mr. Feynman, and it's it's quite a thick book, around 650 pages, but it's amazing. 
you will know about richard feynman the man you will know about richard feynman the physicist you will know about richard feynman the father you will know about richard feynman the husband everything the book is a must read if you want to know his life story in detail so what does james clerk say on feynman so many of his witnesses observed the utter freedom of his flight of thought yet when feynman talked about his own methods not freedom but constraint for feynman the essence of scientific imagination was a powerful and almost painful rule what scientists create must match reality it must match what is already known scientific creativity he said is imagination in a straight jacket the rules of harmonic progression made for mozart a cage as unwilling as the sonnet did for shakespeare as unyielding and as liberating for later critics found the creator's genius in the counterpart of structure and freedom rigor and inventiveness this is one of the very famous quotes from the book but you know, you know, one day, find me so so famous why am i talking about him uh, there are many many funny guys uh, there are many people who are very fun but we don't talk about them so what made find me special so find me did a lot of work uh, first of all he formulated what is what is called sorry about that what is called the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics so at time uh, when feynman was doing his psc and then his phd uh, uh, it was it was a time when quantum mechanics was not clearly understood uh, there was a saying that uh, no one knows quantum mechanics whether it is true or not and and people like dirac uh, heisenberg uh, bohr and uh, fermi Pauli, Einstein, all were working on quantum mechanics, and it was supposed to be the pinnacle of scientific success. And here comes Feynman, and then does something that revolutionized the field. He he thought about a new way of thinking about certain classical problems in quantum mechanics. Then he formulated what is called the the theory of quantum electrodynamics (QED). Uh, he 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 along with Uh, another physicist uh, they formulated what is called the, the quantum electrodynamics theory and for this they eventually got the nobel prize in 1963 uh, sorry 1965 and um, uh, this theory was was way ahead of its way of ahead of its time and and it was something that people did not expect to come so early and by such a young person feynman was just out of graduate school and he was 2 3 years uh, within 2 3 years of his graduate school and then he proposed this theory which completely revolutionized the field and then feynman later on in his life he again revolutionized what is what is uh, called the superfluidity problem so uh, there is this very strange property about liquid helium uh, when you cool liquid helium Uh, it behaves in a very strange way and no one was able to able to understand why that thing happened with liquid helium and feynman comes and does some mathematics and voila the problem is solved so that is another uh, work that was nobel worthy then he he did some work in particle physics along with murray gelman who was another nobel nobel laureate uh, from caltech then there is something called feynman diagrams which he used uh, to describe uh, interactions of particles then he worked on the atomic bomb right after his phd at the end of his life he he was on the presidential committee for the challenger space shuttle disaster and uh, solved it solved why that thing happened and then we know feynman as the father of nanotechnology he gave a very famous lecture uh, that was titled there's plenty of room in the bot at the bottom which is considered to be the beginning of nanotechnology as we know of it today and feynman was very interested in quantum computing too and in fact he has he has a book uh, feynman's lectures on computing also if anyone is interested in that area and they can look into it so feynman was a keen popularizer of physics both through his books and lectures notably a 1959 talk uh, that i already mentioned uh, which started nanotechnology feynman also became known through his semi autobiographical books you are never joking mr feynman and what do you care what other people think and books written about him such as two hour burst feynman also had a deep interest in biology and was a f- friend of the geneticist and microbiologist esther lederberg who developed replica plating and discovered bacteriophage lambda they had several mutual physicist friends who after beginning their careers in nuclear research moved for moral reasons into genetics among them uh, delbruck zillard 
etc are very well known zillard is supposed to be quite a very brilliant guy uh, in fact there is something called zillard einstein refrigerator uh, einstein held a patent and uh, it was it was considered to be a very good model so in his early scientific years feynman turned down an invite from the prestigious institute for advanced studies at princeton then he went to cornell and then at cornell he was very depressed because he could not do any work like he was expected to do and then out of the blue he thought that why don't i do work on things that i find fun so he 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 tried to do that and uh, rest as they say is history so in, in caltech feynman did most of his work uh, the theory for which feynman won his nobel prize is known for its accurate predictions and uh, as you can see this work consisted of two different distinct formulations the first is his patent real formulation and the second is his feynman diagrams both formulations contain uh, his sum over history's method in which every possible path from one state to the next is considered and so on so quantum electrodynamics describes the interactions of light and matter as well as those of part charged particles with each other and uh, this theory as refined developed in the late 1940s rests on the idea that charged particles interact by emitting and absorbing photons it has become a model for other quantum field theories as well so as i already mentioned superfluidity uh, this was a very very important problem in which feynman made a dent and uh, in fact he solved it completely yeah, and that to alone so we dk is a model which showed that uh, the the current coupling in the is the in this process is a combination of vector and axial currents and uh, an indian guy ecg sudarshan and robert marshak developed the theory nearly simultaneously but but they were not uh, not credited uh, unfortunately and it is believed that uh, sudarshan missed the nobel prize for this so there is something called the parton model which i'll not go in details uh, it's written in the slide so quarks and uh, these are a group of subatomic particles uh, they are thought to be the fundamental constituents of nature so uh, if if you if you if you look at the atom it is made of neutron electrons and protons and but what are these protons and neutrons made of they are made of quarks so they include particles that interact by means of strong force they have mass and spin and they obey the pauli's exclusion principle and so on so only uh, there are six types of quarks called up down strange charm top and bottom and only the up and down quarks are needed to make protons and neutrons so amount of angular momentum associated with the subatomic particle or nucleus is called spin so there is another theory called quantum gravity after his qed formulation feynman turned to quantum gravity and uh, he did some some amazing work in this field also and there is in fact a book called uh, feynman's theory, uh, lectures on gravity which is like a very good book for graduate students start wanting to know more about gravity so there is something called quantum chromodynamics as well uh, in which he worked and finally in quantum computing uh, it was a very new branch when when feynman started and it's still a very new branch in fact quantum computers have come into being only very recently so feynman was against what he called a cargo cult science Uh, he said the first principle is that you must not fool yourself anyone the easiest person to fool so you have to be very careful about that after you have not fooled yourself it's easy not to fool other scientists you just have to be honest in a conventional way after that so let's come to his personal life uh, there is this complaint about feynman from his third wife mary louise bell uh, who divorced him sorry his tech second wife who divorced him because he began to think about calculus problems while <laughs> they were in bed and, uh, and it drove her crazy uh, so feynman took up drawing at one time and enjoyed some success under the pseudonym ofe and he even gave an exhibition and and so on he used to do this random things which he liked to do and uh, uh, this fun aspect made him really uh, you know admirable not only to him but to his peers these are some of his drawings So in surely we're joking Mr Feynman he gives advice on the best way to pick up a girl in a hostess bar at Caltech he used a topless bar as an office away from his usual office making sketches of physics equation on plate paper 
so these are some of my favorite Feynman quotes there are 10 to the 11 stars in the galaxy that used to be a huge number but it's only a hundred billion it's less than the national deficit we used to call them astronomical numbers now we should call them economical numbers for a successful technology reality must take precedence over public relations for nature cannot be fooled this is from the famous appendix of uh, the, the report that the commission submitted to the Challenger space craft disaster to NASA and this created quite quite a lot of uh, hula in the press. This is probably the most powerful scientific statement that I have seen in all my life. Uh, I, I have had a very short life till now but I, I believe this is the mo most significant scientific uh, sentence in this one sentence everything is there and this is in the first like uh, chapter of the Feynman lectures on physics so the, here he talks about uh, how his father motivated him uh, uh, to think about science his father was a very remarkable person uh, his father did not have a scientific education but nevertheless he always encouraged Richard to to uh, think about the world not only to think about the world he taught him how to think about the world also so this is one of the favorite quotes of Feynman that I can think about I was born not knowing and have had only a little time to change that here and there so and so on we have this so this is a quote about Feynman uh, from Freeman Dyson who is another very remarkable physicist so, the, here uh, Dyson calls Feynman half genius and half buffoon. This is a quote from Feynman's mother. Uh, if that's the world's smartest man, God help us. So, here are some more quotes. So, this is Feynman while he was in school. This is with his wife lecturing at Caltech in his office. And this is a tribute to Feynman uh, when he won the Nobel Prize. This is the Apple uh, ad in which he featured. Uh, this is him playing bongo drums. And these are some people that I'd like to thank. So if you have any questions, just uh, write down a comment. Thanks a lot.